All right, welcome back. Uh, yes, this is still news up, just in case you just joined us. And we're looking at um, very excellent issues um, as it affects the polity. It's still, we're still still with COVID-19 and is, um, uh, the, the impact. Uh, but the focus right now is let's look at uh, the, the names. Uh, they, they're growing by the day. Talking about um, high-placed uh, personalities in Nigeria uh, that are falling prey or that are being infected by the coronavirus. So I'm looking at the I'm looking at the names here. Um, quite a, quite a long name. So uh, yes, um, sadly we lost our Biola Jumabi, former governor for your state, sometime last week. Um, Abba Kiari also was the very first uh, yes um, high placed Nigerian that would lost them um, to COVID-19. We've latest news, uh, Ms. Governor of. Um, Delta State, you find your co the wife and the daughter. We are also informed that um, the governor of Ondo State, um, Akiru Dolu, has also tested positive to the virus. Shay Makinde at one time, uh, uh, Bala Mohamed Bauchi, Okeze Bazu is still positive. The names just keeps going on in Delta State. We're talking about the SSG to the government, uh, Chiedu ABA. Uh, we also have the Commissioner for Information, Charles um, Aniagu. All of these are the names of uh, highly placed Nigerians that have tested positive to the coronavirus. The big question we are asking is what are we not doing right? Uh, what message could this be sending uh, to uh, the general Nigerians about COVID-19? Maybe, maybe one could say uh, this could send the right message that of a truth that COVID-19 is real. Uh, but then let's speak with Chris, who is still in the studio. Chris uh, Wandu, publisher. Um, CKN uh, News. Uh, Chris, uh, I think I, I posed this question to you uh, during the paper review uh, while we're having so many highly placed Nigerians um, falling prey to COVID-19. Uh, uh, you, you were trying to explain, uh, we are asking, is it a function of negligence or there's something they are not doing right? Um, as I said earlier on, I don't think um, it's uh, negligence. Um, some have taken the necessary um, preventions and protocols um, uh, as laid out by NCDC and the Federal Ministry of Health. And um, you see most of them in public places uh, using face masks, uh, um, at gatherings uh, using face masks. Um, but um, at times, some of them also go overboard. After using face masks and distancing, when it's time to take pictures, they gather themselves with um, anything. But some of them have also been very careless. Some of them have been very careless, and I will be specific here. Um, one of them is the governor of Ondo State. If you've seen what has been happening in the past few days, um, he has not been uh, conscious of the protocols. You saw him dancing with people, um, and uh, without abusing face mask, there was for instance that he was sneezing. Uh, he was on stage singing. There have been instances where he seen him singing. And, uh, so for me, him, for instance, um, he has not been doing the, uh, what he's supposed to do. And even yesterday, another video came out um, showing him, he says he's on self-isolation, but you see him receiving visitors and um, chatting with visitors in his you know, sitting rooms and cracking jokes and rest of them. That's supposed to, somebody that's supposed to be. So such signals doesn't all go well for us. Um, then also there have been utterances by some high level individuals um, who have also tried to make a mess of what we are facing. Um, you have to put into context the utterances of some of our highly revered, I use the word revered, uh, men of God, general overseers and the rest of them, who have thousands and thousands or if not millions of followership. But they still come around and say, oh, no, this is for, um, no, it's not right. That is, yes, we, it's COVID uh, anti uh, church virus now. Um, some have said that uh, it's due to 5G, 6G, 10G. Some have come to say that uh, um, I've been making some utterances. And you know, you know our people, once the GO says something, it's, the, the followers just take it like that look, uh, and just take it and start, flying, and, start, and, and start flying with it. And when you're trying to tell them that this is what you say, what, what do you know? What do you know? That is a, so um, it's a missed bag, but it's good enough that uh, some of the, our highly profiled uh, individuals, politicians, and rest have also uh, been part of it because this also will help in passing the message to those below that um, this is for real. A governor cannot just come out and say uh, he is COVID-19 positive. 
And um, take, for instance, the governor of Abia State. It's been weeks now. And he still hasn't come out of um, um, this thing. He still hasn't come out of isolation. Um, I don't know. The, I spoke with the uh, Commission of Information in Abia State, um, 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 Oki Kalu, um, two days yesterday. And um, I was asking, I said, what is the state of health of um, the governor? Because so much rumor has been going around this and that. So he told me that the governor is OK. Um, it's getting better, that in a few days there is time that he'll be out and um, up and running. So that we should just I should disregard all the rebuts. But um, it is good that this is happening. And um, another positive aspect of it is that our um, leaders also should use the opportunity to provide the necessary infrastructure in terms of health facilities. Well, we're, we're coming to that, Chris, because it's a very important point that we have to really delve into. Let's talk about the implication of these high-profile cases on the citizens of the affected states, so to speak, that, okay, my, most of the time it's the governors, at the, they seem to be at the vanguard of, you That's know, right. the yes, for people to take precautions and everything. What impact do you think, what implications would this one portend for the people of the state? Do you think it's something that's really like, okay, maybe that's even, all of these things are not even working, so why should I do it? Um, it has um, various implications, yeah. That is, first and foremost, the skepticism by some people, um, that will be checked, because if the governor could come out and say, yes, I have um, COVID-19, that means that anybody can have it. Those that are believing that, oh, no, it's not possible. Uh, but um, the governors, using the governors now, are the arrowheads, but there's a committee. It's not just them. They have a committee in place um, across the states. Um, when RFI had it, the deputy governor took over. Um, when the governor Bauchi had it, the deputy took over, although the deputy also became, had it later. <laughs> um, so there have been some more states. Um, yes, um, not all the governors, some have their commissioners of health mm. uh, practically in charge of um, the fight. The fight. Uh, so, but it, it's a signal, it, it, it's a signal to everybody that this is for real. And people should just not believe that. You know, we are too religious here. We are more religious than, we are more Catholic than the Pope uh, in this part of the country. People just believe, that, oh, God forbid. You know, the thing is always, God forbid, it's not my portion. Yeah. It's not your portion, but you're not taking the necessary. Uh, some people have yeah. it and they don't know they have it because mm -hmm. we are not testing more. Why you are seeing that, or the high profile is that because they have been tested. Most of them have been tested. They have, they have easy access. They have easy access to so, this thing. From what I heard, it takes about 50,000 naira to test somebody for. Um, for COVID-19, how many Nigerians can afford 50,000 Naira for them to be tested? And that is why some of the states are running away from saying that, oh, we don't have it, because they know the cost implication. If the federal government comes out tomorrow and say, okay, we are going to take care of all this testing, we are going to pay for it, all the states, including those that are now saying that they don't have it, we come out and say, look at what happened in Kogi yesterday. People had to, our men had to go get to a, a, a hospital, FMC, in Lokoja, and disrupted a, a, could, a, a conference being put together. But, but Chris, could, could, that, could that really be the reason, the cost of um, testing? Could that be the reason why you think some governors are shying away from accepting the existence of COVID-19 in their states? Yes, that is one of primarily. them. Primarily? Primarily, one of them. The secondly is also try to prove that they are demigods. Um, they, they look at them, they are just ostrich, ostrich that just buried his head in the sand, why the whole body is, uh, the, what, how can you say that? Let's take Kogi for instance. Do you know, Kogi is an access road to so many states, okay? To, is an access to almost five or six states. You cannot get to FCT without uh, passing through uh, Lokoja or Kene or, or thereabouts. You cannot go if we cannot move out of that as it's to, uh, to the southern part of co uh, the country, either the southwest or south, is without passing through the And Abuja has a very high rate of that. The other states surrounding the state also have it. Are you saying that in the whole of Kogi, we don't have that? The um, chief judge of the state, supposedly or allegedly, was um, reported to have died of Kogi. But the governor came out and said, no, he didn't die of, um, he died of, um, 
whatever he needs. Um, so that's, but that for me, it is not the way to go. It is not the way to go. You say you have an application that can, uh, an application. Can detect. <laughs> Sorry. That can detect. That can detect. Even the American, they don't have such, I don't know whether they have such applications. So maybe, I, we, 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 maybe we're, uh, this morning I talked about the fact that we should be setting the blaze. Maybe <laughs> yeah, uh, research, something is, research and technology. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, it could be happening. But let's talk about this <laughs> testing. I think we have to dwell on this one. Very important. Okay. You just mentioned that you feel states are shying away from admitting or talking about the rate of COVID-19 in the states, especially a particular one that we're mentioning at this point in time. One would have, an average Nigerian would think that NCDC was going to subsidize that, which is an arm of the government, which is uh, primarily saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that we get over this particular one. Uh, are you sure that NCDC is not really working with state government to cushion the effect of testing? Um, I don't think it's um, in terms of funding for now. I don't think it's more of NCDC because. There's a committee that has set up, some people set up a committee and have raised billions and billions of naira, if you remember. Yes. Um, and about two or three accounts were opened for that purpose. For me, personally, um, I don't know what they've been doing. I know that some, uh, some days back, I saw pictures of that they have um, opened up um, a 150 bed or whatever isolation center in Lagos and the rest of that. Apart from that, I don't know. I don't know whether they're working hand in hand with NCDC on that. Um, but I think we can do more. Our testing capacity is very, very, very low. In a country of about, um, let me say 200 million, whether we like it or not, maybe more than that. Uh, we are just looking at about 25,000 um, people that have, been, have tested positive if you look at a, a country like Ghana, close to us, and you've seen their level with almost one quarter of our size, and you see the number of tests they have done. Then you look at South Africa, which has barely about 57 or close to 60 million um, people, and see the number of tests they've done. And some other countries within the African continent, then you see we are not doing much. So we should be able to increase our capacity for testing. So many states don't even have um, where you can test, look, in the north, most of the blood sample has to be, uh, be brought to Abuja for testing. That is very difficult. And um, then in, in, the, uh, in the east, um, I think the one or two states, uh, is, so that means some states don't have to, in the southwest too. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to increase our capacity. And the NCDC cannot do it alone. This is where, and that is where I, I commend the Lagos State Government. Um, what they have been doing so far, what they have been able to do is to attract private um, partnership. Yeah, partnership in doing this, and that has been helping. And that is why you could see that Lagos is on top of it. Eco, eco for sure. And they always show that um, Lagos have been very, very lucky in the kind of uh, leadership they've always had. You remember what happened during the Ebola time, during the period of uh, fashion life, not for the way that Lagos State and do Ebola. A, hundreds and thousands of Nigerians would have been killed. Um, but that was promptly handled. And don't also forget that the, the first uh, case of COVID-19 we, we had was not even from Lagos. It's from Ogu State. But they have to, the, the person has to be moved to Lagos for proper and they'll be able to do So um, with this unlocking of um, interstate movement, airport opening, the churches have not opened and um, in the markets, open, there is going to be a spark. There's a spark already, already. because mm -hmm. if you look at the United States, um, uh, two days ago, they're having um, about 100,000 new cases of um, most of the states that were wanted to sh shut them, that wanted to open, had to quickly shut down again. down again. So it is moving. Even in China, it's the same problem. So I think we can do more. Um, the government should continue um, making sure that we try to um, keep up the campaign. Uh, we keep on talking to people. People say we are not campaigning. Well, what else do you want to do? On the and daily basis, on television, you're on radio. But, but Chris, do thing. you support the, uh, the, I think there was a report yesterday that they were developing a local homemade test kit. Do you think that can suffice? That's the way to go. That is the way to go. There are some drugs that, some of the drugs that have been noted um, that can be used 
um, for such. Um, countries that have those draws are competing for their citizens in the U.S. There are certain draws you can't take out of the U.S. now. We even learned that the U.S. has bought the I, whole there, thing. You, we, I didn't even want to go there. There are certain yes. draws. Yes, now, because your citizens matter most. For the U.S., it's not about COVID-19, again. It's about the November election. Mm. Because Donald Trump, staying or not, may be largely dependent on that. So in America and some developed countries, those are the, what they use to play politics. So if a Biden comes out and says that within the time that this man has been here, within three months, we've lost 125 or 130,000 Americans, and there's nothing you could do about it. That's, a big, that's going to be a big be minus. Dead, yeah. you, you understand? So the same thing, we, we have lost so many people here. But back to your question, we must find a homegrown solution to the problem. The one that we collected from, is it, where is that country? The one that the uh, I can't remember uh, one of the countries in Africa. Yes. Is it Malawi? I can't Madagascar. 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 I don't know the outcome, but I know we have the capacity. If our scientists um, are well encouraged, I think we can be able to come up with something. Because at the end of it all, we still have a home, we need a homegrown solution to this problem. We should be able to encourage our people also to go into research and also to come up with vaccine. Um, some people, uh, some top uh, officials like Governor McIndey came out and said that he took certain local drugs. I don't want to, not whatever. Very, not verified. I said he said. <laughs> not tested. And as alleged. Yes. As a tested. student of law. So he tested it. He tested it. And, he, he was and it worked for it was, him. And it worked for him. And it was negative. It was a specimen. Then, yeah, well, whichever way, but the man, whichever one, but the man <laughs> said that he took it. And it turned from positive to negative. So I think we should start um, pointing out such lights on such uh, yeah, drugs, local, on local, local, local content. Local solutions. Yes, local, local, solutions. local yes. content. You see, you see, whilst I was doing my introduction to the show, I was really not some names. And yeah. then um, I, I took our time to go through all of those names. So we've seen commissioners. Uh, Commissioners, we've seen SSG, we've seen governors, we've seen we've lost senators uh, to this fight against COVID-19. And then I had a conversation with someone a couple of days back, and he was saying to me that uh, it's all in the open right now. Uh, how bad our health uh, sector is, how badly funded the health sector has been. Mm -hmm. And then I did a bit of research, and I realized that yes, of the truth. Uh, our sector has been, the health sector has been so badly funded. And someone also said, uh, if not for the fact that COVID-19 is a global pandemic, we probably wouldn't have heard of all of this. Well, this, 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 this gentleman would have been flown out of, out of Nigeria uh, for, for better health and services abroad. Uh, but then it is a global pandemic. There's nowhere to go. Uh, what, where am I going to? Let's look at the issue around funding for the health sector. Um, the, the, the Abuja declaration puts um, the figure at 15% of your budget. And, and that, that was reached in uh, 20, 2010 or thereabouts, or thereabouts. But then Nigeria had never reached or met that 15% um, uh, benchmark for health funding. Uh, the latest we had 2020 is about 4.5% of the budget for health. Uh, shouldn't we start having conversation around um, uh, greater budget for the health, for the for health, for the health sector. Um, that's why I was saying that um, what is happening is more like a, a, an eye opener. A, is an eye opener and a blessing in disguise um, because um, our leaders have to realize now that we are having serious issue. It's not just only health as well as education. We've been having this drop for years. Um, there's a global practice and the minimum you can do when it comes to funding. But what, rather, what do we fund? We tr fund traveling, we fund national assembly. We correct expenditures. We, we, yes, mm -hmm. we fund um, uh, lifestyles of our leaders, which does not impact in any way in the lives of the people they are supposed to. At the a, a, a budget, how much uh, the percentage that we use, um, we do budget for infrastructures, um, recurrent expenditures. So you come to realize that we pay lip service to issue of health. We pay lip service to issue of education. Those two are the key for me. And, um, and that is, it has always been that, both at the federal and the state level. Before, you used to have functional health institutions um, at the local government level. But go to all the local government areas now. You can hardly find any of them. 
Okay. Maybe some people will argue with you that the primary health care system of the present administration has been even much better compared to what we had in the past. For instance, there's, within Lagos, there's hardly any local, uh, locality you get to that you won't find a primary health care center. I may not be able to say much about other states of the Federation, but the question will be like, how much do we take care of the little that we have? And that's talking about attitude of those that are put in charge of, especially our healthcare facilities, even before the COVID-19. Do you think we have the right attitude, even as citizens? Maintenance culture, one, but that also depends on funding and the, and the people you put in place to take care of that. Lagos can never be used. Uh, in fact, whenever I'm, when I'm, I'm making any analysis, I don't ever use Lagos to compare any states uh, because Lagos has a model that is working to a large extent. And uh, so you can't use it. That is why, if you see anybody policing anywhere, probably the best bet to rush to is come to Lagos. Since you can't you, travel out of the country anyway. Because so everybody Lagos in, the, Lagos, is the, in the latest land. Lagos is the latest <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to uh, health, health, health. I would call it health maker. So <laughs> sort of. But this can be replicated in other states. Um, the state governments can do more. Instead of um, the so called uh, security boards, which they are. Use, I use the word chopping and sharing among themselves can be used to put certain infrastructure. Health is key. A healthy, a healthy nation is a driving, is a, is a moving nation. Okay? And um, if we can be able to put that in place in the local, you, you, you talked about federal government doing enough in the primary health. For me, I've not seen much because um, even in the states, states that you expect to have such facilities, they don't have them. People have to go a long way, except the um, FMCs, um, which to me, the government is doing uh, well enough to be able to equip. But how many people can that serve? In a situation where you see doctors going on strike on a daily basis, nurses going on strike on a daily basis, without, um, and when, once they go on strike, nobody to attend to you. Then at the, at the um, private sector, you see the cost of going to private hospitals. Most people can't afford it. Most Nigerians can't afford it. That is why all of them, most of them, would rather prefer to start treating with Agbo, or local herbs, and the rest of them because they can. How I many of them can afford? Uh, what is it? the prices of drugs is going up, of recent. Most people don't know. Prices of drugs have increased by over fifty percent, some close to over hundred percent. Drugs, yes, and that is the area we should be looking at because we should be able to bring down the prices. You know why? Because we don't have the capacity to manufacture enough, and now we cannot even go to import because of COVID-19, because of the restrictions, if you understand what I'm trying to say. So most of the drugs that we can we would probably go to China to get, India and the rest of them, we cannot be able to bring them. So what, that, what happens is that the little we have, there is so much, uh, so many people going after the little, and that in itself has skyrocketed the prices of drugs. So I believe we can do more. Um, if the global practice is for 15%, if we can do 10%, fair enough. Fair enough. It is fair. 10% is fair enough. And that is where I think the government should come in play that. Both at the federal level, I think we should have a legisl legislation in place, both at the federal and the state level, that the least budget, any state or federal government can budget for health for any given year should be 10%. Yes, we know that. See how much we are spending on insecurity. Most of our budget is going into security, security and the rest of them. Despite that, we are still having a serious spike uh, in that. So uh, health, uh, they say, is wealth, but um, it, it's becoming a loss for most are, Nigerians. You are sounding like you are, you are calling for a fresh declaration for 10%. <laughs> I, ha when, I am when, calling when for the, 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 the AU uh, the AU declaration of 2001, mm -hmm. the Abuja declaration, so is 15 percent, and, and I'm sure they, they have looked at the, 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 the modalities. They have looked at the importance of them. So I don't know why 50 percent, 15 percent should be such a huge challenge for a country that that believes that health, health, health is wealth. Mm -hmm. That believes that health is a paramount uh, 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 nomenclature mm -hmm. uh, of the existence of its people. Dave, you talked about, when you started your interview, you talked about 4% presently. 4% to 10%. What percentage is it? <laughs> she, she, if you understand what I'm trying to say. That's over 100, over 120, well, 100%, 20 percent right. yeah. To me, that is fair enough. But you know what they'll tell you? they say, no, uh, it's not only health. 
that we do. Don't forget, we're going to provide roads. We're going to provide schools. We are going to provide this. We are going to provide, and we look at it. So it's not only the health sector. Uh, we have so many things that we need to provide. And this, but when you look at the so-called, whatever they say they are providing, are they providing them? Most of those money are embezzled, start away in bank accounts for people, for, or, for what they will not even be able to use or spend in their lifetime. Hmm. Some of them don't even know that starting this money, you don't even know whether you live to see the next week. Every day is a gift. It is. Every day is a From gift. God. Yes. So I, th I still believe that we need the legislation that the list, despite what the Abuja declaration, that the list, every government, and the go federal government should start with it. Okay? If the federal government can be able to keep up to its own bargain when it comes to that, then the state government, we have no option that. So we, we can make that compulsory. Okay. So that the, gov the doctors and NMA and other headquarters, those are the basis under which they can be going on strike. If there's any state that is seen not meeting up to that, then there's the need for... Uh, for so, so, some people to, are, to uh, are of the opinion that once, that most of the times viruses find, get to find, always find a way around just leaving definitely, us. Definitely. That they're very worried that after this time, there's every possibility that some, government, some state governments will just go to sleep and be like, okay, we're fine. So health sector can go back to the way it was. It's true. Are you of that opinion? It's true. And don't forget that most of what they're providing even now are temporary shelters. Yeah. They are not permanent. Look at the so-called isolation centers. Some of them are at the, at the stadiums. They just put canopies, put air conditioning, put beds and the rest of them. Those are temporary. Once the issue of this uh, COVID um, goes down, you remember what happened during Ebola? Mm -hmm. Practically everybody, every state was having an isolation set or whatever name, whatever name you call it. Most of those things were not permanent. We should be looking at short-term and long-term solutions to some of this problem. Not when, tomorrow when we have a, whatever we call it, China flu or whatever flu that comes up tomorrow, and that's run now, we should start putting permanent structures. Yes, I know that it's going to be a short term, but we also look at the long term. As we are looking at the short term, let us also be looking at the short term. If for every isolation center we are putting you know, of 100 bed facility, or 150 bed facility, let us see if we can put a permanent structure for a 100 bed facility. If you understand what I'm trying to say. Mm. So that tomorrow, by the time we dismantle all these uh, canopies that we are putting up now that we call isolation centers, we can also have permanent structures so that whenever we have an upsurge in such, then do you know why most countries hold um, World Cups, football? Do you know why most of them hold those, um, so try by, to bid for so it? So by infrastructures. That is it. Any infrastructure, look at all the, uh, all the countries that bid. Mm -hmm. First thing they do is to bid stadium mm -hmm. in about eight cities. Once they build those stadiums and you finish your World Cup and leave, it becomes a place where they can grow their sports. Yeah. That is how it is done. We did it where we hosted uh, all African games. But have you been to our national stadium at, uh, at Abuja? We are it now. Sorry? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> you're talking. <laughs> go to well, well, those, those facilities, mm. those facilities that we had during uh, Koja. I yeah. think it was Koja. Yeah. Koja, during the Koja. Go and see all the stadium and see what it has turned to. I went to the stadium uh, in, at, at Abuja some time ago and I wept. Because I was living, I was staying in Abuja during that period, and I tell them most of those was a fantastic work well, class. Work class. But now, the, the minister was there a few days ago, and you heard what he said, what he met there. It is, that is the way we live, and I don't know how long we'll continue to live uh. like this. It's so sad. You know, Chris, I, I really don't know where we, where we go from here on this matter, but I strongly want to believe that uh, this facility is that... Uh, or rather, all of this money that has been uh, put into the fight against COVID-19, uh, that it should have some permanent um, undertone um, looking at it. And there may be more, like you said, uh, an eye-opener for every economy. Because one would have wondered, if we had this much money that we could spend mm -hmm. in these times of emergency, why couldn't we have just naturally just budgeted this money for the health sector mm -hmm. and you know, have defined uh, direction for spending the money for the health sector? So it sure, it sure should be an eye-opener for It for is everybody. an eye-opener, which is what I'm advocating. Um, first and foremost, I think we should, also, we should start with the committee, um, the committee that came together.
to raise those funds. Um, a lot of people, a lot of organizations have, um, have donated billions and billions of naira. I don't know at the last count, I don't know how much they've donated. But if, you can, if they can put up one or two, three permanent structures, world class, when I say world class, world class hospital facilities, where instead of every little time, by the time they open up the airspace, you see all of them jumping out now. <laughs> all the governors will be going to London, going to America, going to all parts of the world and the rest of them. Some don't even, some go on medical checkup every two, two months abroad. They don't even believe in the system that uh, uh, they are talking about. Oh, we are providing health facilities. None of them can go or their family will go to that, those hospitals. So the committee instead of can set up, let's look at, set up, let's, uh, let us even look at about in each geopolitical zone that we set up a world-class facility. If you understand what I'm trying to say, that if you go there, whatever um, is needed, is needed we'll find it. Okay? You want kidney? Is it going to be kidney? Is it going to be... Name it. Most of these major, the heart operations, these are not, they are not just... To, it, it, it's not sky rockets no, uh, at all. Yeah. There are facilities and cheaper equipment that you can bring in now. Uh, and the government can help. If it is, the government can say, okay, we are giving some kind of waiver in terms of taxes. Even individuals, even individuals that want to set up, that okay, for every set um, health facility that you bring in, in, the import license or whatever, we're going to call that, okay, Nigerian custom, please slow down this, um, FIRS, please slow down this. Let us see as much as we can do to be able to be, because before you know it, another one will come. Nobody knows what is going to be, it is COVID-19 now. Mm. Tomorrow it might be COVID-19. It could be any other thing. <laughs> and we now start running all around Chris, again. Uh, before, before we like to go on this one, most of the times uh, citizens look up to their governors, especially at the state levels, to take a cue from what they do. And Dave and I, you also, we've talked about some videos going rounds of some governors and their conduct in the society. Mm -hmm. uh, would you consider it to be a case of do as I say, not as I do? What should these uh, executives be doing right now? Maybe that they have to do to ensure that first and foremost, I even wonder how you know it's possible for them to contract it, but it's possible. It's no respect of anyone. What are those things that the, the executives or the people, you know, let me say top officials, should be doing, which have not been doing, or, not, or possibly not been doing as much as they should be, uh, to, to press so home message, yeah. this COVID-19 seriousness in our society and how to keep safe? Um, I personally feel that we should start having some level of enforcement. Enforcement. Um, in some countries, if you don't wear face mask, you must not be seen on the street. But the question is that 200 million people, how many policemen do we have? So if you start arresting everybody that is <laughs> not wearing face mask, I say you are taking them. But there should be some level of enforcement. I'm telling you, Nigerians are the kind of people that, except you put your feet down. Also, I saw, uh, I saw a video, uh, social media is becoming, well, you know, that is my. Uh, that's, that, your that's, that's your turf. <laughs> that's your <laughs> turf. <laughs> yes. So, as the president of Guild of Professional Bloggers of Nigeria, I know that on a daily basis there are things that come to me and that at times that it does not even get to the police. But I saw somewhere in Lagos a few days ago where some policemen were arresting. Some people not putting on face masks, and I saw some Nigerians going there to beg. Hey, they feel one leg. Hey, you know, say, hey, Joe. Hey, they feel one leg. my one. You, you know that kind of. You know that is our attitude. But um, we can only. But the governors can only. But remain steadfast in trying to push the message. They should be the number one PR person for this. For this message, all governors should be the number one PR person. We should continue to drive the message that this is for real. Those that have been waiting to see those that have COVID-19, that some of them have been saying, yeah, we are, we've not seen, okay, we've not seen them, so how can you? They should stop that. They should know that he, who's the person that they use his head to break coconut, doesn't eat out of it. And another saying in my Igbo language that when you see the corpse of somebody being carried 
along, it looks like a log of wood. Except you are affected. People have been dying. So many people are sick. The hospitals are not, the hospitals are not attending to people any longer mm. because of fear of COVID-19. There have been so many cases of people going to the hospital and they are rejected. So people have been asked, go and test, go and have a test, a COVID-19 test that costs over 50,000 naira. That's almost the two, um, two months salary of some people to just do a test. So for us to be able to avoid it, let us try as much as possible to do the needful by adhering to the protocols. The chief executives at the states which should continue driving this. They shouldn't see it as something that is just left for the downtrodden because you don't know who next. Mm. And the problem with COVID-19 is that if you have underlining health issues, it becomes so. If you have underlying health issues, you, it, it becomes very, very terrible. What happened to the late um, governor, uh, ex-governor of um, your state. Ohio State is a very, very terrible one. Because this was a man that despite taking not necessarily, in fact, as you, Dave rightly mentioned, he, he made a video where he was clapping for health workers and you are doing mm. a wonderful job and the rest of them. Before you knew it, within a week or two, the man just, and they, all attempt to be able to um, take care of him. If it was to be money, um, it, it, it would have saved him. Abakari, if it was money, Abakari wouldn't have died. If it was money, uh, the senator wouldn't have, died. Peperito wouldn't have died. If it was money, so many of our top uh, officials wouldn't have died. Not only in Nigeria, in even outside the countries, there have been high. If it's all about facilities, over 125,000 Americans wouldn't have died. You know why? Because America has one of the best facilities in the, health facilities in the world. But people are dying there. People are dying in England. People are dying in Spain. People are dying in Italy. These are countries, advanced countries, that have all the basic facilities. What of Nigeria that we don't even have? Ordinary, anything kills Nigeria. They will say they have God. No, God cannot. God will not come down from heaven to come and, and so we have to help ourselves. And all those in authority should know that this is a clarion call for them to be able to improve on our health facilities. I continue saying that. Our health facilities need to be improved. I said it that a lady that is close to me just died this morning hmm. because we don't have the basic infrastructure or health facility to be able to take care of her. That is just one. After so many, there are so many, also, there are so many people who have died. We've talk, we're talking about 500 and 700 people. More than that have died in Nigeria of COVID-19. There are so many that we don't know about and people should be careful. We realize what happened in Kanu. We have people who are saying that, oh, on, what was that, like, mysterious death and the rest yeah. of them. And that's why when N NCDC and the health minister came out that, oh, this happened and the rest of them, still, most people still don't believe. We have to be up and running. This is not a child's play. And um, I personally have to um, um, also praise the federal government. So far, they've tried. I'm telling you, as a matter of fact, um, I've been surprised by the way the federal government, the current government, have been able to handle some of these issues with the committees they put in place, daily briefing from NCD. On a daily basis, you have over four or five ministers coming to sit down to brief Nigerians on this. And um, I don't think there's more they can do more than that, than yes. they are doing. But we must improve on our health facilities. If we need the money to get in the infrastructures in place, Fine. If we need to, um, we are borrowing millions and millions of dollars, we are going to put aside. If we can take a certain chunk of that money we want to borrow to also put into the health sectors, that will help us a lot. That's my personal we, take. We also, we also need the private sector involvement in, in this uh, to a large extent. Um, I also believe that there should be a window for partnership with the private sector, even though uh, COVID-19 has almost brought the private sector to its knees. Uh, but we still know that there are still some private sector that um, could still come um, to the aid of the health sector. But I'm also looking at a possibility where shouldn't we be looking at um, incentivizing uh, uh, investment in the health sector, uh, talking in terms of um, issues around uh, maybe tax rebate, uh, maybe, maybe uh, waivers uh, for importation of um, health facilities. Maybe that could also encourage uh, um, some health, um, health, health practitioners, private health sector players to really uh, look at um, healthcare as a major uh, investment hub. Yes, you know I've said it before, I said it in my, my speech that part of what we should be looking at is where we should have waivers on, on health um, equipment, facilities, that's why I was talking about FRS and uh, customs, yeah. uh, 
telling them to be able to um, just slow down this. Already the private sector is doing something already. If you know that the committee, that, COVID, that, yeah. that the COVID, COVID fund, fund yeah. um, is largely over 90% private sector driven. Mm -hmm. And some funds, various organizations, including banks and industries and individuals have um, um, donated some money. My worry is that I hope that money will be judiciously spent, um, not just on little, little things. I want to see basic infrastructure that tomorrow we say, oh, during COVID-19, this was what we were able to put in place. If we had done that when we had Ebola, by now we could have been improving on what we had. Mm -hmm. But after Ebola, everybody went to sleep. And the state government started doing Power their changes. Change that power is it. Power change. Yes. Power so that is. Changed. Yes. So and that is our, that has always been our attitude to issues like this. We should be looking at and seeing what other countries are doing, even those around us. If you see how much Ghana is budgeting for health, you'll be surprised. If you if you see what South Africa, Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa. Okay. Um, it has always been. They say South Africa. It's between South Africa and Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes. So, but it's a fact. Uh, but I've always seen Nigeria as elephants with clear feet. I know what that means. Um, so most Nigerians walk like elephants and eat like ants, and that is very very bad. So uh, we need to rejig our economy to also be able to have enough. Um, we, look, we need to look at areas where we think we can have comparative advantage over and above other countries around us. We need to look at uh, decentralizing our dependence on oil. Uh, because when you continue saying that those in government that are watching say, don't mind them, they'll just get it. Where are you going to get the money from? That's what they were saying. But if we, if we are creative, we can make it work. Or we just need a creative minds in this country, sincerely. Oh, oh, all right, Chris. Uh, now the interstate travel ban has been lifted. And so anyone can travel to any part of the country at will. And as we speak, the, the number of COVID-19 positive cases going up. What should governments be doing at this point in time that would not promote further surge and the number of uh, coronavirus positive cases in the country? For uh, transport, um, don't forget that first and foremost, um, COVID-19, how it came into the country. It was a foreign disease, quote and unquote. And the, um, <laughs> the people that brought it <laughs> flew into the country. Okay? Ebola was a foreign uh, well, imported disease. Imported yeah. disease. The man came from Liberia, flew into Nigeria, and started sharing it among us. So that is why transportation is a very key factor when it comes to spread of things like this. Um, so um, there are certain protocols that have been established by NCDC, especially when it comes to public transport. Are we adhering to that? Is the FR, um, Federal Road Safety doing up and doing when it comes to that? Are the various motor parks in the country doing that? Is the NU um, RTW doing what they are supposed to do? Are they, are they making sure that anybody that enters that vehicle is putting on a mask, wash his hand, and you don't have more than about 70% capacity in the buses? I was, when I was coming here this morning, I was looking at most of the buses in Lagos. We have feed to capacity. Mm -hmm. But the Lagos State government came out with a directive that every all, all the buses i don't know whether they've changed that i don't think that has been changed that buses must not be full to capacity probably if it used to be four seats uh, four to a seat it should be about three now mm. but i saw buses filled to capacity i've seen some from so. this morning yes, driving down to the you saw, i'm sure you must have seen some i too. saw them yes so that is the problem so uh it is uh, enforcement is, is a very big challenge for us yeah, and uh, the only thing we can be doing is to continue to preach and continue to preach. And just like Jesus Christ did when he came, he continued to preach. Some people listened. Some didn't listen. Even among his disciples, some didn't even believe in him too. Some betrayed him. So uh, it's a big challenge. But I know 
that what the government has done so far is not trying to push it back to the people. Exactly. You see, that, that, yeah. that's what I'm going the to. The government has now pushed it back to the people. You take responsibility, take respons yes. responsibility for yourself. It's very key. And if that is very key. The government says the boss should not take X, more than X, X amount of individuals, yeah. and then you're about to board the boss, and you can see that the boss is all, I mean, that is almost exceeding that figure. You could step down. Yeah. That is taking responsibility, take responsibility, which is what I think uh, Nigeria should start beginning to look at. Chris, yes. thank you so very much for talking to us thank on, you very much. on the show this morning. You've been here thank since um, the News Report Review. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having with me. Us. Thank, thank you. you. Chris Wandu, publisher, CKN News. Uh, okay, we'll take a break. When we'll come back, um, we'll have our next conversation. Don't go away. Say something, you say no.